Awesome. All right. So, hello, everyone. Uh, today's agenda is, is first, I will highlight some uh, Lens 4.0 uh, release fe new features, what we have done there. It's, it was released, uh, was it uh, over one week ago? So it's quite fresh. So let's have a quick look what's in Lens uh, 4.0. And then we have a, uh, I, I will show how, how to build Lens extension. I have an example extension that I will serve for you. All right. So I'm Lauri Nevala and Anna. I'm a staff engineer at Mirantis and one of the uh, core, core developers of Lens application. And um, actually this background image is taken almost a little bit over one, week, one year ago and where we released the Lens application IDE first time. So it's now the, now the project is uh, over, one one year old and, and I think we have we have gone quite 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 far since we released this first time. All right, uh, uh, you can find me with this handle on on Twitter and 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 on GitHub. If you need to ping me there, please go ahead. So Lens 4.0 is, is fresh from, from the oven. And, and there are two major changes that we, we included in the release. And uh, the first thing is, is improved log, logs interface and then the extensions API. And uh, other, other changes, we, we added mechanism for users that have limited access to, to cluster, a uh, way to define accessible namespaces. Uh, typically or normally, uh, if, if user doesn't have access to list namespaces, he can or she can uh, define that in cube config file. But if you have access to multiple namespaces, uh, there's not way to, to share that information to, to Lens application or even in kubectl. You need to know that beforehand. So we, we added mechanism so that users can define those in, in cluster settings, all available namespaces that user has access and, and Lens will show those namespaces. And then we added a tray icon to, to give quick access to Lens dashboard while it's, it's not active. And uh, other minor changes, uh, now it's, it's uh, allowed to restart deployments or scale stateful sets. Previously, you could only scale uh, deployments directly from Lens dashboard, but now it's for stateful sets too. Then you can search IP, uh, ports by IP on, on the list view. And uh, we changed the default Helm repository to, to use Bitnami instead of deprecated stable repository. And there are tons of other uh, small changes and bug fixes. You can see all those from the release notes. But let's take a quick look on those major changes. So previously, the Lens IDE showed all pod logs on a, in, a, in a modal di dialog. And that basically blocked, blocked all, all the interaction with the rest of the UI. You were only stick to that lock dialog. So in 4.0, uh, we moved those logs to, to the drop area on the bottom of the uh, application where uh, already 
our present terminal and, and resource editor. So the logs are displayed there now as well. And uh, since we done that, it allows to have a multiple logs open in separate tabs. And, and then you can, you can open resource details or basically any other view while, while logs are visible. So it's not blocking that. You can check the port status and, and whatnot. That is interesting based on logs. And now you can also see logs from previous containers of that port. And, and the log stream is actually real time. So it, it will constantly update the logs and you can scroll up and, and Lens will, will fetch new logs from, from the past uh, simultaneously while you are uh, seeing those logs. And, and then there's now search uh, functionality. So uh, you can actually search some some entries in the logs. I will I will show this in in a demo shortly. Okay, and then we we published first extensions API. Uh, and what are those extensions? So those may be the, the, or this extensions API may be used by the community and, and a cloud native ecosystem vendors to, to develop Lens extensions. And also organization can leverage the extensions to develop their own features to Lens UI and, and, and add functionalities that are import, important for those organizations. So this uh, extensions API work uh, started already in, in 3.6 areas where we refactored quite many pieces you know, in order to, to, to support these extensions. So it, it has been quite huge work that we have done and now it's, it's the initial version is now ready, but of course we will constantly update and, and leverage the extensions API. So what, what those extensions are capable? Uh, those can present some uh, global pages, uh, add some items to status bar of Lens app, add cluster pages that are uh, visible on, on a cluster dashboards. They can uh, add new object details for Kubernetes resources, add some application preferences or cluster features, uh, et cetera. Let's come, come back to this on a later on a, on a extensions guide part. And like I said, new capabilities will be added in future releases for sure. So this is only the start. All right. Let's see those those features in action. So, so I have one across the dashboard here and, and the logs part is now visible when I open this logs. So it's now visible on the bottom of the application, like I said. So now we can use the whole screen for the logs and it's constantly updating. We can switch between containers. Are we gonna toggle timestamps? We can see logs from previous containers. And we can search. So if we look, for example, 
with admin it will highlight all the all the items and we can we can iterate this by pressing enter or mouse click and in future we will we will uh, enhance this so that actually you can see logs from from for example now it's only available for ports but in future you you are able to see the logs uh, aggregated logs from deployments and demons etc and whatnot so but this is the first step to that direction that we needed to do first. All right, and then some extensions. Let's close this. So what those extensions can be, this is to give you some idea about those. So for example, Extension can, can add some, some uh, details to Kubernetes resource details. For example, here we can see extension that will show the node location on the map. And of course, we can use this same, same mechanism to show all, all nodes on the map. And maybe even all, all clusters in the map in a, in a global pace. Uh, then here's uh, what Daniel already mentioned and told more about. It's about this starboard extension. It's also adding uh, details to Kubernetes resources. Well, at this case, it's, it's adding those on deployments. So we can see here the reports that Starboard is generating and, and, and seeing immediately what are the uh, issues with this uh, deployment. Like here's WordPress has, has five critical issues and those those reports are already are, are also listed in, in a dedicated section of starboard extension and, and this starboard is quite good example because it's also adding a cluster feature so basically you you install something that is deployed in into the Kubernetes cluster when you install this feature. And then we can also, for example, visualize Kubernetes resources and their creations. So for example, here we are seeing uh, resources from all namespaces and how those are linked. And if they are installed from Helm, we can see that too. And what, what resources the Helm uh, release actually has deployed. And this is very cool. If you, if you have any, any errors in your Kubernetes con, uh, config files, for example, we can see here Im immediately that uh, this Kubernetes service has something wrong in the config. It's, it's missing the uh, port relation. So most likely, likely the selector part is, is broken. So we can, we can immediately uh, fix that. Oh. What is very cool showcase also is you can have a space invaders. This is actually a, a example of chaos and engineering. If, if you are familiar with cube invaders, so this is uh, ported to lens extension. So actually all, all uh, invaders here are 
ports in the cluster. And we can start, start shooting those down. And what we are seeing here that we can see that the, the cluster is, is actually restarting those containers or deploying those. So this extensions API is quite capable already. So you can you can use your imagination how you can utilize that. And of course, if you see something is, is missing, uh, come to talk to us so we can we can improve this. So your extension ideas can be implemented as well. There's a couple of questions that came up in the chat. Um, one is, is the visualization created using one of the components offered by Lens Extension or some external library? It's, a, it's an external, external library that is used, used on, the, on that. Uh, we are exposing some components from Lens Core. So there are certain components that are uh, shared from lens application so you you can use those components and you can see all all documentation api documentation and components that are available on on, on our documentation site and then another question was uh, can it extension access to other clusters outside the current cluster that's being viewed Uh, it depends. At this moment, if if you if you want to have something that is is cross cluster thing, you can add this old uh, global page that is actually it's then filling this whole whole lens application window and there you can you can reach all clusters and and, and, and display some information from there and then there's another question can we have extensions per kubernetes cluster uh, Yes and no. Uh, I'm not sure is it already implemented, but we are, if not, we are adding some mechanism how extension can know and decide is it active on, on, on the cluster. So for example, uh, there is no point to uh, have extension active activate it on that kind of cluster where, for example, needed CRDs are not present. So, so then the extension can itself decide, is it visible or not? Any other questions from the group? So we have more questions coming. So there's a question uh, from the global page, can we access data of other clusters? 
Mm. Uh, if I remember correctly, you can, but I think please check it out from the, the documentation. So there is mechanism how, how you can uh, access the cluster pro by providing the cluster to the method call and it will it will return to cluster context for you and you can then basically fetch anything from the Kubernetes API. But yeah. So short answer. I'm not sure. Please check it out. And I'll all ping me later. I will I will pick the information for you how that can be done. Okay, and we have a question. Does the page extension show all the menus that we normally see? Uh, extension can show all the menus. Uh, not sure what do you mean about this question. Richard, can you explain what you mean? Yes, so regarding to the clo uh, cross um, cluster mu mu uh, functionality, you mentioned that I could see it uh, other clusters through a page extension. When I am in a pa page extension, can I still see like workloads, configuration network from uh, that page extension, or you mentioned that it used the entire page. That is my doubt. So, so the uh, global page is a, it's it's like this add clusters uh, view that we are seeing, and uh, extension can fetch information from from. Uh, all the clusters that are added to this lens application. And based on that, you can basically display information from the cluster. Of course, it, it depending on what access the user who is using the lens has to those clusters. So you can only display that data that the user is capable to see or allowed to see. All right, that answers my question. Thank you. Mm. About the extension that detects that the given workload is my my SQL already white based UL visualizing data. Mm. Yeah. This is a node yes. So if you have credentials to databases stored in Kubernetes cluster and you can and are allowed to fetch those credentials and you can programmatically uh, connect to those databases. So why not you can do that? I'm not saying that it's it's simple to do, but but yeah, if you are able to fetch that data, then Yes, it's, it's possible to visualize the data from databases. Uh, about extension security, uh, we, we will provide a marketplace for extensions. We didn't manage to get it for 4.0 release, but uh, I'm sure there we will uh, add some labels to, to extensions and 
of course, first, all, all extensions that are in that marketplace are somehow uh, checked beforehand that those are secure. And, and there might be also some, some uh, other labels that we will add those uh, extensions that users uh, would benefit, but yeah. All right, any other questions? All right, maybe we can go to the extension part. I'm sure you will have more questions after this slide. So, and hopefully this will also answer to your questions if you had something already. All right, so, Let's take a little deeper dive into lens extensions. What are those and how, how to build extensions? Uh, so lens extens extensions are NPM packages and then those are developed in TypeScript. Uh, lens is using React for UI components and MobX for state management. Man management. So uh, those are, are provided to Lens extensions by Lens application itself. And the Lens extensions API exposes in, it uh, provides registration hooks to register capabilities for extensions. And it, also provides some uh, React components that you can reuse from Lens application. And it provides access to Kubernetes resources and store to persist data and some common color definitions. So you will have common look and feel with the rest of the Lens application if you, if you use those both components and, and color definitions. So what do you need to get started? First, you need to have Node.js installed on your machine. And if you are uh, cloning uh, our extension samples, they, they are found in, in GitHub. You need Git for that. And then you need some sort of text editor. VS Code is quite good for that. And we are using Webpack uh, to compile Lens and, and it's also used for compile uh, extensions. Oh, those extensions need at least be compatible with Webpack system. And then about extensions anatomy. So basically the, because extensions are NPM packages, they need to have some manifest and then uh, some entry file that is executed. Uh, because Lens is, is an Electron application, an Electron application basically have two processes running. One is main process that is running on the background. And the other one is renderer process that is, is uh, taking care of the UI part of the system. So you can have entry files for both of those uh, processes. And then, of course, you most likely have also some additional source files that are implementing the business logic of your extension.
So the extends the manifest. Uh, each lens extension must have a package JSON file uh, for the manifest. And with lens uh, extension, it contains a mix of Node.js fields that are standard for or required for NPM packages, and including scripts and, and dependencies of your extension. And then there are few lens specific fields. Uh, in the in the manifest or package JSON file. Then the extension must have one, and it can have two separate entry files. So it has to be uh, or has to have entry point either for my main process or renderer process. Uh, but of course, it can have both if, if the extensions have some functionalities on both processes. So why not? And for those entry uh, files, we have a base classes that those uh, extensions, your own extension classes, entry classes must uh, extend. For main process, we have a lens main extension, and for renderer, we have a lens renderer extension base classes. And your entry classes must extend those in order to, to extension is working. And so both of those uh, base classes have on activate and on, on deactivate methods. Uh, so on activate method is called when, when the extension is loaded. And you can initialize there uh, your, your stuff like uh, classes or variables or whatever you need. And on deactivate is, is called when the extension is unloaded. And it's a good place to uh, free some resources if you have reserved or created some, some uh, variab variables or classes, objects for your extension. All right, and, and if your extension is, is running on main process, uh, in addition, its own functionalities, it can register at menus. And those uh, at menu items are displayed on OS native menu. So it's, it's the standard one. And you can, you can add some items there. And for renderer extensions, there are a uh, few more capabilities. Like I mentioned, uh, one is the global pages. And those are visible on Lens main window. Then the extension can register some application preferences, uh, then some cluster pages. And those cluster pages are visible on, on cluster dashboards, like these. So those uh, resource map or or cube invader. And then extension can register cluster features, like this cardboard did uh, or uh, has some some features that are deployed to to cluster when installing that feature. And then extension can register something uh, in the status bar of Lens application, some icons or text that is visible there and, and bind some functionality when clicked those items.
uh, then extension can register some uh, object menu items. Those are visible for, for Kubernetes resources. And actually we have uh, changed, for example, those port logs or shells uh, to be extensions internally. So the, when, when you are clicking logs item, you will actually execute an extension or the uh, functionality is run inside the extension. And then you can register some details to Kubernetes object, like the starboard was, was registering uh, those vernal reliability issues. And then uh, you can also register so, some object status text. Uh, and those will be displayed in resource lists. Uh, for example, if, if now we are displaying if, if some resource has some uh, errors or issues on based on events that Lens is, is doing uh, already. So you can have a similar kind of status text added by your extension. So let me show then how, how to build the extension or implement. So our target is, is to have some list of CRD resources, on this case, certificate uh, CRD objects. So how to get started with extensions? So typically it starts so that you create or symlink folder under uh, home users home folder uh, dot k eight s lens slash extensions folder. So when adding a new uh, folder or directory under there, lens is uh, automatically recognizing that and, and it will offer that as an extension in, in extensions uh, section of the Lens app. You can also use uh, German Lens extension generator to, to gen generate your extension skeleton. And this generator can be found on GitHub. And then you need to have this package JSON. On our case, we will have this kind of uh, so we have a name for our extension, and we have a renderer entry point that is using renderer.js after that is generated when we compile this, this extension. And uh, it can register some metadata. Those are lens specific. And in, in future, there will be more lens specific properties. And then we have some scripts to, to make easier to build and start or run scripts. And then we have a dependencies that uh, our extensions needs. Mm. So this is quite typical NPM package yes. JSON. Yes. Good. 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 <laughs> All right, then extension will have a couple of config files. One is DS config JSON used for TypeScript. 
And then we will have webpack config that defines how the extension will be compiled. And there are a couple of coaches that you need to know. So we will use some external dependencies from Lens app. First, it is the extensions API module, and then there is React and MobX. And the story behind that is that uh, in that way, Lens will have the same version of React running uh, on Lens app itself and on your extension. And only one MobX uh, instance is running when Lens app is, is running. So if there are multiple versions of or instances of MobX, it won't work. So this way we ensure that MobX is Mob X is, is uh, loaded only once. Uh, you can refer the extension samples or use the extension generator to generate these files for you. So these are quite static. You don't need to uh, modify those. All right, and after we have this package JSON, we, we just need to uh, run npm install command so it will install or download those uh, dependencies for our extension. So next thing, is that we want to, to actually implement our extension. That uh, list of uh, certificates that are displayed on, on a cluster dashboard. To achieve that, uh, first we need to register some cluster page and cluster page menu objects from our extension. And then we need to list those certificate objects from Kubernetes API. And for that, we need to define the CRV object. That is actually this. Uh, CRV objects define uh, fields that it includes. And then we need to implement the API and store objects and create certificate page component to, to render those certificate objects. And then we can customize the details panel that is, is opened when, when clicking one uh, list item. This might sound quite huge task, but, but actually with Lens Extensions API, it's quite simple. So the first task was register cluster page and cluster page menu. So we need to have some text editor. And first we uh, implement or introduce uh, our extension class. And at this time, we are extending it from Lens renderer extension because we are implementing something that is visible on a UI. And to register cluster page, we just define it. We, we, we will give some ID that page and define the component that actually uh, will will be rendered for this page. And similar way, we will register the cluster page menu item. And here 
we will give the ID of our cluster page as target, uh, some title that is displayed on the cluster menu, and then some icon component that will display the icon. And it's, it's referencing certificate icon component that we can introduce as well. So this icon component will render uh, icon component from Lens Extensions API, and it will use security icon uh, from material icons and have some tooltip. So now we have registered these uh, components to Lens Extensions API or with Lens Extensions API. And then we need to implement this uh, CRD class that we want to use with our extension and API and store objects, how, how we can fetch those uh, objects or, or resources from Kubernetes API. So to define this CRD object, we just extend a cube object a class from Lens Extensions API and give it the kind property. It should match the CRD definition. And we will define that it's, it's namespaced and the base API root uh, or base API path that is used to, to fetch those, how, how those CRDs are fetched from Kubernetes API. And then just define those properties that the CRD the definition is, is having. And to uh, create those objects for API and, and store, we can utilize uh, Lens Extensions API. So the, for the API, we just extend again uh, base class from Lens Extensions API in a cube API class at this time. And we will create object and export that object. And we will give our CRD class as object constru constructor. And then we define certificate class that is using this uh, API. And create instance for the store class from the store class and register the store to, to Lens API manager. Uh, you might wonder what are these stores and APIs. So basically this store is something that is, is containing uh, the resources that are coming from Kubernetes API. And that store needs some reference to Kubernetes API, how it actually fetches those. To, to. So we, we are using or uh, defining some API that is used to fetch those resources. So by doing this, we can use this certificate store to, to fetch our uh, CRD, CRD, certificate CRDs from Kubernetes API. And this API is having all, all uh, credentials and uh, 
whatnot. So you don't need to worry about that. You can just use it as Okay, now we have this uh, CRE and an API in a store object uh, defined. So we can actually create the component that will render those CRDs. So basically we just extend uh, our page component from React component and define how it render things. And to make things easier, uh, Lens Extensions API is, is exposing a couple of handy components. So this cube object list layout is the component that will take the store as property and it will automatically fetch those items and, and render those in, in table-like component on the Lens app. So we just need to pass the store, give some search file filters. Optionally, we can also define some sorting columns and definitions how, how these columns are stored. Uh, then we just need to give some title and define header columns and the actual content columns. And that's all. So now we have a certificate page that will render those CRD objects. And then we can uh, customize the details panel that is op uh, opened when clicking one item. Again, uh, we need to register something on, on our extension class. Uh, it's very similar, similar as we done uh, earlier. So we just need to register cube, cube object details item. And here we will give uh, some Kubernetes kind property that these details items are uh, handled for these kind objects and with these API versions. And when those are matching, we will display, display this component on that details panel. So every time we are clicking certificate that is using these API versions on a side panel will be rendered this component. And what is inside that component. So it's again, it's a React component that is rendered. It will get the certificate object as property. And then we can use a draw item from Lens Extensions API to have common look and feel how, how all other stuff are rendered on the side panel. And we can, we just, uh, render some data or information from the certificate object. And what we need to do to see this in, in lens app is we just need to uh, command run npm run dev command because it, it was defined in, in fact it's JSON as, as script and enable that extension in lens app. So 
So actually, I have this source code here on VS Code. And as you can see, it's, it's the similar or the same. It has also these imports that I have stripped out from, from examples. But we can just run this npm run dev. It will compile this extension. And we see it here on. on uh, lens extensor section. Actually, it might be already enabled. Yes, it's here. And we can see it here on the cluster site menu with correct uh, icon. And on this cluster, I don't have any, any certificates. So let's try another one. All right, and here we have, it will automatically, the component fetch those certificates from Kubernetes API. And when clicking this, it will open that details panel. And how we can we can develop these extensions? Actually, we can just uh, edit this. For example, change the title. Where is the title? Save it. This will be automatically detected, changed, and rebuilt or recompiled. Uh, we just need to refresh this page and we will see the change immediately. So it's quite easy to develop this. Uh, you don't need to uh, compile or build Lens IDE on your machine, you just need to develop your extensions and, and, and enable those on Lens IDE and you can develop your extension and see how is it working in the Lens app. So when you are ready with your extension, you, you, you are thinking that, that now it's, it's at that point that it can be uh, published, published. So how, how to publish that? So in order to, to uh, able to install uh, extension in Lens app, it needs to be uh, NPM package. And you can e very easily do that by uh, running NPM pack command. Uh, and when that is done and you have this tarball available, you, you need to put that someplace on some place where it's, it's publicly available for download. For example, it can be asset on, on GitHub release EDC. And those extensions then can be installed by providing URL to that extension or by downloading that package and, and, and 
uh, browsing and selecting it from file system, like they have the starboard, for example. And the complete source code for this example, you can find it from, from GitHub on, from our Lens of repo, uh, organization on the Lens Extension Samples uh, repository. There are other samples too. So when you are starting to implement your own extensions, you can uh, take a look on those and see how things are implemented there. or uh, reading uh, documentation, checking the API documentation, what components are exposed and, and that kind of stuff. And if, if you need any help, uh, Edward shared the link for you. You can uh, come to our uh, community Slack channel and there are plenty of people that are willing to help if you if you have any, any issues or questions, you need, need answers. All right, great. Thank you, Laurie, for your presentation today. We really appreciate you taking the time for this. Um, I'd like to announce the winners of our raffle for the lens hoodie. So the winners are Prasad, Miriala, and Richard. So. Um, I message both of you, please email me to coordinate um, your shirt size and shipping. Um, Laura, do you still have time to answer any more questions? Yes, I have. I have. So. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we're a little bit over time. So um, let's see. Does anyone have questions? Let's see. Stefan has a question. How could we get the extension of resources map? Uh, I still need to polish it a bit, but when it's done, I, I will make it publicly uh, available. So I think same okay. same is for uh, the invaders thing too. So all right, any other questions? All right, if there's no more questions, then thanks everyone for joining today and we'll see you next time.